My name is Elizabeth Goldner Ross. In 1968, I was known as Liz Goldner, the first woman to sell print advertising space in New York City. Her, 1968 was a dangerous time in New York City, but I was young and fearless. I had this rent-controlled apartment at 62nd and Lexington, right down the street from Bloomingdale's. It was a no security walk up. I um, had a bedroom on the fire escape where a drunk fell in the window, so I got bars on the window, and then I couldn't get out in case of fire. But I didn't care. I felt like I was at the center of the universe at that time. Nationally, the news was terrible too. Our beloved leaders were being killed every day. Bobby Kennedy, Martin Luther King, the Vietnamese War, the, the protests, and yet this great music coming at us daily. We didn't know what to listen to first or what it all meant. It was my dream of being a Broadway dancer that brought me to New York, but uh, very few cattle calls taught me that I didn't have enough technique and I had no connections. I had saved enough money to go to Europe, where, which was another dream. And there I happened to dance the can-can with the Moulin Rouge. But that's a whole other story. I came back to Manhattan in 1967, but I didn't want to be a dancer anymore. I came back because I loved New York. So I took a boring job um, just to figure out what to do with the rest of my life. I was feeling pressure from uh, the growing competition of all us baby boomers. We were just on the cusp. All markets were getting crowded, and I had no college degree. As it happened, down the hall from my boring job was the rock magazine Hullabaloo. Just incredible traffic back and forth all the time, counterculture types in their leather jackets and jeans and cowboy boots, blasts of music. I started stopping in there, chatting up the manager, Joe Coleman. Joe knew that Steve Kahn's Flip magazine, another teen magazine, was profitable on circulation alone. 200,000 copies a month made it America's fastest growing teen magazine. Steve Kahn was a lawyer, fresh out of law school when he started FLIP and uh, was written up in the New York Times. When I came on board in 1967, we were only three people in the office. Steve chased down most of the stories himself and he took me up to the Waldorf once with him to meet the Bee Gees. And we walked in the middle of Andy having a tantrum and Brother Morris ran down to the lobby to buy him a big, big teddy bear. And I always wondered who bought those overpriced items in hotel lobbies. Bands came to our office occasionally. Uh, Grace Slick and the Union Gap, I got to take their photographs and have them published in the magazine. And I had a friend, Kenny Goodman who um, was a publicist for the Pink Floyd at the time. I didn't know who they were, but he invited me on a photo shoot to Central Park, and I had a picture of myself up in the tree with the Pink Floyd in my beautiful leather jacket that I had just bought with the first money I'd made at Flip, and a cowboy hat. Um, unfortunately, I lost that shot with all my souvenirs when I left New York, not long after I worked at Flip. I loved being exactly where I was in 1968. Going to rock promotions, dark places, flashing lights, strobe lights, enough weed in the air for a contact high, 
dining on hors d'oeuvres, access to any music event I wanted, free tickets to hair, Janis Joplin on her last tour at Fillmore East, Studio 54, Village Vanguard, endless stimulation. But in 1968, Madison Avenue was a men's club. We know that now from Mad Men. But I was young and fearless. I thought I was part of the times that were changing. The men I was selling to didn't know what to make of me. I was 24 and I looked 18. I was cute, articulate and persistent. They let me take them out for three martini lunches and then bought cheap ads. Six months of small ads made Steve impatient. So he bought a back page of the New York Times for a life-size photo of me. Meet Flip's new ad manager. Well, all kinds of high-powered executives were only too happy to take my calls and give me appointments. And uh, a whole new world opened up to me. Steve's second idea was to run a promotion for McGraw-Hill to launch their new Beatles biography by Hunter Davies in exchange for running a full-page ad. I had to press Steve for one, but I got it. In lieu of a raise, I got a Beatles book. I left Flip in 1969 and my autographed copy of the Beatles biography is my one remaining souvenir.